Now on Sunrise, more teens in Minnesota are heading back to the classroom. But some say this safety plan is nothing but smoke and mirrors. I'm live at the Capitol breaking down a vote today aimed at rewriting who calls the shots when it comes to reopening schools. Then four days and counting of sub freezing temperatures in Texas with no clear picture of when lights will be turned back on. The question now, what's taking so long? Clouds are back in the forecast, plus flakes still fly. You don't want to miss the seven day forecast. I'm tracking a warm up. We've changed our buying habits during the pandemic, and so have our favorite stores. One of our sales associates had his best month he has ever had, and about 40% of his business he did through text message and email. A look at how shopping may be different even after the pandemic is over. And history being made this morning. NASA plans to land a rover on Mars. Why this mission is bigger and more sophisticated than ever before. It's February 18th. CARE 11 Sunrise starts now. Sunrisers, when you start your car this morning, remember these words, take your time. Photojournalist Jason Rantala is in Mobile 11 right now. It's in Edina, and that light snow we got overnight causing some slick spots. That's right. Check this out. Slow moving on I-94 and Highway 101 there, as you can see. Uh, yeah, there is uh, some slick roads out there. Uh, there are plow drivers already out in the roads, and we were uh, on our way to work this morning. Guy and Alicia all over the conditions this morning on, on the roads, and what's in store for us later today, Guy? Yeah, you know, no need to rush. Take your time, put on your favorite jam, and just relax. Eight right now. Feels like minus two after you factor in the winds. So we do have a wind chill out there with winds out of the southeast at about six miles per hour. Sunrise just at about an hour and 10 minutes away. So we are gaining that daylight. Clouds throughout the morning hours. By the time we hit mid to late morning hours, I think light snow and flurries will take a break. And then it's possible we could see again a few flurries kind of linger into the afternoon hours. I mean, we really make progress once we get overnight. So when we get overnight, that's when we'll do some clearing. And then sunshine comes tomorrow with a a bit warmer temperatures in the, in the afternoon and that seven day forecast it's coming i'll tell you how warm we'll go coming up in a bit and now we've had a, a string of crashes on the stretch of 94 in the rogers area as you're coming towards maple grove another one here blocking uh, the left shoulder tow truck on the scene this is at 241 and 94 eastbound but zooming in closer uh, along this entire stretch all the way to get to the fish lake split it's not pretty this morning i'll have those drive times coming up in just a few minutes well, who should be making the calls when it comes to reopening classrooms at your child's school? That question up for debate later this morning. Republican senators say the decision should not be in the hands of Governor Walls. Uh, Jennifer, they take away his emergency powers over schools. This could happen, right? Well, the debate over this gets underway uh, this morning around 11. So this Republican backed plan would leave school decisions up to each individual district. Meanwhile, the governor yesterday said middle and high school students can go back to class as early as Monday, with most being back by March 8th. If the safety protocols outlined in the state's safe learning plan are mandated, the state says 25% of educators have gotten at least their first vaccine. 18,000 more doses are expected next week just for educators. And hospital levels are down to pre-COVID numbers. These educators want to be with their students more than anybody, and we owe it to them to make sure they do it safely. And we mentioned that uh, middle and high school students can go back to in-person learning uh, next week if those state uh, guidelines, safety protocols are mandated. Republicans in the Senate are saying, no, that's not the way it should work, that the governor should just be giving guidelines at this point in the pandemic. Again, that is the debate that will play out this morning in the Senate starting around 11. Chris and Gia. All right, we'll hear the back and forth later on. Thank you. Take a look at this map. It shows the 10 largest school districts in the country and where they stand when it comes to reopening. That's right. In L.A., all schools are still closed right now, but in New York City and Las Vegas, elementary students are back in class. And in Chicago, everyone is back except high schoolers. In Houston and several big Florida cities, schools have fully reopened. And we've heard from lawmakers, and now it is your turn. What's one thing you'd like lawmakers to know as they decide the future of our schools? Text us here on the set. The number is 763-797-7215 right there on your screen. We'll share some of your responses coming up in a few minutes. 
Happening today, a huge public hearing about who should protect your neighborhood. Minneapolis council members will listen to pros and cons about removing the police department and creating a larger public safety department. It's the latest effort by some to reform policing after George Floyd was killed. More on this coming up at 630. All right, sunrise is live this morning, where, as you can see on radar, another round of winter weather is moving across the state of Texas. The death toll there is rising with at least 14 people dead and hundreds of thousands of people still without power this morning. And people posting their frustrations online like this woman who shows that her block is completely dark and while empty buildings, as you can see across the street, are completely lit up and still have power. She wrote, turn it off. The people need your heat and power, not your fancy empty office building. And people going on to day four now with no power or no water and now having to deal with their pipes bursting inside of their homes. Another woman sharing footage of her soaked apartment building walking in what looks like inches of water, telling us it's actually coming in from the walls as well. And another woman posting this picture. Check it out. She's calling this is her new water source. Snow filling her bathtub going on 60 hours without any heat and power. People in Texas are also now resorting to burying their food in the snow in their backyards to try to keep it from spoiling because right now getting food is also a really big problem. Check out this long line in Austin outside of a grocery store. Melissa Correa of uh, our sister station, she's a reporter there down in Houston. She tells us the energy crisis is turning into a water crisis. And just this morning, the city of Houston, the fourth largest city in the country, issued a notice for people to boil water. How do you do that when you don't have power? That's a good point. Meanwhile, journalists like Melissa and other people have been pushing on city officials and ERCOT, the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, for all the answers. And so this morning, there are none. Officials added that things will get better once it gets warmer, but people, they're in need of emergency assistance there right now. So yeah, a lot of people still hurting, a lot of people uh, hoping to get some answers today. But again, uh, it's a big problem for a lot of folks. Yeah. Now time for some other top stories in your morning rush. We're getting an updated look at the security plan for Derek Chauvin's trial. 2,000 National Guardsmen and 1,100 other law enforcement members will be on standby. South 6th Street will be closed starting March 1st, and there could be other closures when the trial starts March 8th. Downtown Minneapolis will be open for business, but city officials say owners should consider boarding up and moving any important documents. A bill legalizing recreational marijuana has cleared its first hurdle. Yesterday, the House Commerce Committee passed the adult use cannabis bill. The bill still has to move through several more committees before the full House takes it up for a vote. Republicans in the Senate say they will not consider the bill this session. Twins bench coach Mike Bell has kidney cancer. Bell is taking an indefinite leave from the team as he fights the illness. The 46-year-old is recovering at his home in Arizona with family after a surgery in late January to remove the growth. And this is warming our hearts. Underdog Rescue in St. Louis Park taking in shelter pets from Texas. About 70 animals need a place to go after the pipes froze at their animal shelter in South Texas near the Mexico border. If you want to help the dogs, you can head to the Underdog Rescue website. And that's your Thursday morning rush. Over to you guys for the one thing weather. Hey, take a look at these current wind chills. It feels like minus two in the Twin Cities. Twin Cities, one of the only few areas that uh, has a wind chill right now in the metro. Still some sub-zero wind chills in portions of the state. And uh, this is in a pretty spot this morning. Unfortunately, if you're coming from Monticello, St. Michael, Rogers, towards the Fish Lake Split and Maple Grove drive times, uh, looking at 33 minutes right now. The average speed about 40 miles per hour, so it's a slow go for the morning commute. Well, NASA is just hours away from landing a new rover on Mars. We're connecting the dots on how the mission and its technology is making history. For decades, humans have imagined little green men and saucers flying down from Mars. Science and space exploration have yet to prove they exist, but NASA's newest rover, Perseverance, is set out to prove that there was life on the red planet. First, it has to go through the seven minutes of terror. The rover will have no help landing from Earth because of the radio signal lag time. Once safely on the surface, the rover will head to the site of an ancient lake for its first mission. Perseverance will search for microfossils, proof of life, and collect samples that will return to Earth by the 2030s. Tagging along on the mission is Ingenuity, a helicopter that NASA will try to fly on Mars. If it stays airborne, it could change the way scientists explore in space. 
and that's connecting the dots. Well, NASA set up a live stream on its social media channels for 115 Central. Yeah, how fun, but we won't be able to see the rover actually land, but NASA will be able to confirm in real time whether or not it happened. Plus, there are other fun activities for students to follow along. Pretty Sounds cool. like a good time. Yeah, I think the terror is more for um, all the folks in NASA, too. <laughs> Small businesses forced to get by with the times in an era of COVID-19. Plan to keep some pandemic changes forever. Plus, giving birth during a pandemic, not something everyone is running to sign up for. But this group of moms says experience wasn't all that bad. The good they found in starting new life during a global health crisis. Then getting into top tier colleges might be harder than ever this year. Why students from 2020 could be making acceptance more difficult.